In the next example, I will introduce you a USB DFU class. So uh, this um, is uh, for download firmware update, universal class, uh, which is intended uh, for a software update of uh, already of the device which are already in the field or also for the development. Uh, this class uh, in a uh, uh, current way uh, can use uh, one of the two drivers. Uh, there is a bit older version connected to DFU update 2. We will also use it uh, using this demonstration and this version use a dedicated driver from ST, STTube 30, which we will be able to sh uh, see a bit later. There is also a bit newer version connected to a new tool from ST, uh, so-called uh, Cube Programmer, which is using different driver, um, um, which is made on uh, Win USB. Uh, we, you are able to see on DFU class also uh, in embedded ST system bootloader. Uh, but uh, the capabilities of this uh, mm, class uh, or of this implementation there is limited. Uh, as you for sure know, there is no possibility to change the content of the system memory. So the bootloader there is fixed and uh, with the rising needs for the security, there are also Mm, or different functionality, there may be need uh, to implement your own bootloader. Uh, so, for example, USB 1 using the DFU uh, class. So, uh, in our example, uh, we will uh, create a project where uh, part of the uh, user flash uh, will be used uh, for the bootloader itself. And the second part uh, will be uh, updated using uh, the USB. What is also one of the advantage uh, with uh, user uh, bootloader is that uh, you may use uh, other kind of protection, for example, the readout protection, uh, which I will show you a bit later. And uh, with the system bootloader, you won't be able to use uh, the readout protection at all. So again, we will start with QPMX. Uh, still the F446 uh, nuclear board. And like before, we will use uh, precise clock source, so uh, bypass high speed external. go to USB OTG and full speed and choose device only. Additionally, we will go to a middleware and choose the download firmware update, so DFU. Here we will also use the PC13 for the button. Uh, later on in the program using the button we will choose whether we want to update or go to the new program we loaded using the DFU. So this is all in the pinout tab. Now we will set again the clock so the input frequency is 8 megahertz and for example, 168 is good for us. But uh, here with DFU, there is a bit more uh, configuration we need to cover in the middleware layer. So we can see here uh, some uh, class parameter settings and uh, two most important uh, are the DFU uh, up default address and DFU media interface. So first is the address of the application which we want to load. So on uh, some address we'll start our second part of code with the 
program which uh, is intended to be updated. So we need to choose uh, probably according uh, to some sector address to so make some estimation how many uh, how many memory we need for the uh, bootloader itself and the rest we can dedicate for the application and uh, that we also need to show in the media interface which is part of the descriptor and it's describing the device we are using so uh, here is the starting address of our microcontroller and after that uh, we are highlighting all the uh, part of flash inside of the microcontroller we are using so with different family uh, this uh, descriptor will have different shape and uh, after that there are the uh, letters which are standing for the size of the uh, amount of memory so here it's k 16k of flash and the a or g is about uh, the permission which the user application will get so let's go back to the presentation and here we see uh, how it will be in our case this is uh, but that's not exactly what i want to show you now so the default address sector 2 uh, 8000 uh, and uh, uh, internal flash descriptor but uh, more important is uh, part of the application node uh, about about the letters and their meaning so byte kilo mega that is quite obvious but uh, more important and not so uh, uh, straightforward uh, visible is are the digit uh, be, uh, behind uh, the multipliers and here you can see that A stand only for readable, B erasable, uh, all permissions are for G. So uh, if you need to, to get more information or look for it again, there is the application note 0424 and on page uh, 72 you can find all this information. Um, but uh, back to our example. so. On the default uh, address, uh, we will use the sector 2, so 8 million 8000. And as we can see, uh, the granularity of STM32F446 uh, is uh, four sectors of uh, each by 16K. First two we will use for the bootloader, then is uh, one 64K sector, and afterward, after that, free 128k sector of flash so only the first two sectors will be read only and uh, for the other the dfu uh, host will have the possibility to uh, read write and erase so let's put it into the cube so the starting address 8 million and 8000 and after that we see that uh, 8 million is correct then we have two uh, 16k sectors with read only after that will be two sectors uh, with uh, 16k we already can read write erase after that one sector of 64k with read write arrays after that and the last uh, types of sector are free 128k with all the permission and that's all we have so with this shape we can continue but uh, also we need to be uh, careful that this is true uh, only for uh, our STM32 F446 with a different family, maybe different. Uh, last thing we have here and uh, maybe also important for us is the uh, transfer size. 
uh, with a higher, uh, uh, higher number uh, will be a faster transfer. We need to be uh, careful that the DFU is using only endpoint zero, so the granularity of the transfers uh, is still 64 even with the high speed, but uh, it will be faster uh, grouping if we use higher number, but also with higher number uh, is growing the need for the RAM dedicated uh, for this buffer. So it's a trade-off between the speed and the uh, dedicated RAM to this purpose. Uh, next setting we need to do here is also the interrupt uh, because uh, inside of the DFU driver is used the whole delay so we need to have a smaller priority for USB than for the uh, SysTick so we get we don't get uh, locked uh, and with these changes we are uh, free to build and so some name so dfu up again we choose the true studio and we increase bit uh, the heap as uh, we use uh, quite a big uh, buffer for the memory and we can generate a project so let's open the project and take a look what was generated for us again the main and the important part is a DFU interface file on the start uh, we can see the uh, flash description string uh, which is passed to PC and showing the information about uh, connected uh, device and here are the important function uh, for uh, entering or accessing the memory uh, so erase, write, read and also the status. For now it's empty, uh, again it may be uh, device dependent, uh, you have uh, the content uh, uh, how to fill it in the presentation but a very easy and convenient uh, way how to find uh, correct code is also to use the example in the cube repository. So in this example we will use them. So let's go to the repository. So I have here installed all the packages. So let's go to F4 project STM32446 Nucleo Applications USB device and here is DFU standalone, so example which already uh, contains uh, all, all the or at least similar code. So in the source we will see the main and uh, DFU flash.c where the code will be visible. So here we again see descriptor in the similar way and the uh, preferred function so let's use it in such way so first during the initialization we need to unlock the flash during the init we want to lock it again For erase, there is a bit more code. Also for the write.
read is quite simple. But still, it would take some time to uh, figure out how to correctly fill. Then we have the status. So again, use the same. And we can see there is a bit more function or a bit more variables used in the code. So for example, the sectors uh, which are entered. So we need to add two more functions, mainly due to the uh, fact that uh, the applications still, still want to be universal. So get sector uh, function and get bank in our single uh, bank device. It's quite simple, but it's here due to the universality and compatibility with uh, dual bank devices. So we need also to define these two functions. So let's put them into the not private function declaration. And uh, we should also miss in the header file the sector numbers. Let's take a look if the red file, yes. So also we add these sector numbers. And now the microcontroller will be able to show to the host uh, available sector and rewrite uh, the code which is in the user section of uh, our program now. But still, all we want uh, to be uh, able not only to update the code but also to jump into the code we loaded into the microcontroller. Okay. Flash programming time, flash erase time. That is something I missed to define here. So, yes, put it there also. So we can take a look into the main.c of our demo and here will be visible the function which is uh, used for uh, jumping to another part of code. So in the function here the button is checked and if the button is pressed and the address where we uh, are planning to jump contain the code. We change the address uh, to this one. Uh, normally this is fine. According to our documentation before this jump uh, also uh, interrupt uh, or interrupt should be clean and uh, cystic uh, Cystic should be disabled because uh, some troubles uh, could be reached uh, during this, but uh, it's uh, 
more or less only to be 100 in line with the documentation and for the simplification we will use only the function as it here in the example. So I will again use the example code and put it in the main. Here I want to use the begin end section because uh, I don't want to initialize the USB if uh, there should be jump to the user code. But instead of the BSP function we will use the regular read of the GPIO. GPIO C, GPIO pin 13. Okay. There were also some definition which we need to use. So let's copy them also, only some of them and this should be now completed. So let's try if I haven't missed anything, yes I did, uh, okay there is also the definition of the p function in the main.h. So not here. Okay, I found it in my presentation to do not lose the time. So just the void. And now we have it completely. So let's uh, go into the debug, load the code and connect to the mic and connect to PC. So now it's running and we can observe connected devices. And here we see our microcontroller in DFU mode. So now we are connected, uh, but how to use it from the PC? I told you that uh, now there exist two options. First one is a, a DFU demo tool, which is available on ST sites. That, that one we will use. Uh, a bit later on. Second one is the uh, Q programmer quite new option. So you have it in the presentation uh, presentation attachment or you can find it also on the ST website. So I will go directly to the uh, installation folder. Now there is available version 3.0.6 and here uh, there are not only the documentation and drivers, but uh, two most important files are the file manager, which is creating DFU files out of the hex file and the uh, demo application itself. So let's run the demo and we can see that we have connected device and here on the internal flash we see the sectors and uh, what we are able to do with the sector, so the permission we have. So on first two, which are uh, allocated uh, to the bootloader itself, we can only read. On the other, we have the full access. So now 
we have uh, uh, the application in the microcontroller but nothing to be loaded so for this purpose we will again create a very simple program uh, with uh, cubemx so a new one again f four four six z e and here in this project we will only enable the LEDs and the LEDs are PB0 PB14 and PB7 and that's it we can just generate the code with some names and of course Atolic so let's open the project I will close this one so it's not uh, mixing with uh, my project and now this is the LED uh, toggling program which will be loaded into the microcontroller memory uh, with the DFU so using the USB and we need to make uh, two changes here to make it run from different than the default 8 million address so first is the linker file so we will highlight here that uh, uh, the program is starting from the address 8 million 8000 and second important thing is uh, that uh, we are um, as we are on different address we need also to move the vector table so on uh, m4 core which is inside of the f446 uh, uh, there is the option to reallocate the vector so not exactly here we want in the source file so we can see here that Vitor is flash base and offset and we know that uh, the flash base is smooth to address 8 million 8000 so these are the changes uh, which are necessary to run the project from different address now we just add uh, our simple functionality here so init everything and now in the while loop we add the led toggling so it's pb0 and for example pb14 and in between we put some delay so that's it but uh, we want to uh, load it into the microcontroller using the debug but we need to get a hex file as an output from the build so for uh, various uh, IDEs uh, this option is uh, different uh, so how to do it here in the Atolic we will go to C, C++ build settings tool settings and in other we see the output format so we want to 
uh, get Intel hex as output from the build. So OK, and let's build one more time. And here we see that a hex file was created. OK, so we have our hex file. And now we need to push it uh, to the microcontroller itself using the DFU. So let's return back to the installation folder with the DFU tools. So here we will go to the file manager, which will create us uh, such windows with option. And we want to generate a DFU file from a hex. So let's continue. And so first we need to choose the hex file. So where I have it. So USB example, stagger, debug, and here is it. And generate here the a DFU file. So successfully created. So we can close and uh, return back to the demo tool. So now we are here. We choose to update. and go to debug and here is the DFU file. We want to have it also with verification and go for upgrade. So everything went successfully and now we can see after the reset, the LED are toggling and the device is not connected because uh, before the USB was, was initialized, we jump to the user code, but if we reset with holding the blue button, the application is again available and we are able to uh, one more time up upload the data. So, here we are now, uh, now more or less in the similar functionality like with uh, the system bootloader. So now we can demonstrate uh, the functionality of uh, this solution also with uh, readout protection. So we can use the ST-Link and go to the option bytes. Or for demonstration purpose, we will first uh, erase the complete chip. Disconnect. Uh, now I need to load again the main application. So close the LED and use the application. Uh, with USB DFU. Okay, so now I should be again able to see, but it uh, cannot uh, enter the uh, second part of the code, so the user application is not loaded there, as I uh, expected. So let's go to the ST-Link utility and enable the readout protection one. After this move, you won't be able to work with the system bootloader anymore. So now with system bootloader, you would not be able to uh, load the code. Uh, but uh, uh, 
The readout protection is not disabling the access to the flash, only the debug possibilities and the system memory possibilities. So now the debug cannot read the memory content, but uh, using our bootloader, we will be able to access there. So can reset. Okay, one more thing now. Uh, as we, we enabled uh, the readout protection, and uh, so debug access to the microcontroller is disabled, and ST-Link on the nuclear board is accessing using the debugger the uh, microcontroller. We need to disconnect the ST-Link, uh, otherwise uh, it will be stuck and uh, cannot run. So right now we will remove uh, the connectors on CN4. So now the debug is not uh, active and cannot uh, access the microcontroller. But the application is running. So now the microcontroller with the readout protection 1 and still we are able to upgrade. Again with the button we are able to jump uh, to uh, the bootloader but uh, using the simple reset the device disappear in the program and LEDs are blinking. So uh, this is all I wanted to show you in this uh, demo. For sure uh, more can be uh, achieved using this tool. Also you may be used uh, that uh, using system bootloader you are able to uh, access more types of memory, for example, also the option by runtime programmable. Um, this is also possible using the user bootloader, but a bit more programming is uh, needed then. Also, external memories connected uh, to the microcontroller can be accessed using this way. And there is a lot of option and nice uh, results can be achieved using this one.